Afternoon. Um, we'll start right on uh, Miami. Uh, Mark Rick has done a terrific job of coaching uh, a group of young men with, uh, you know, great athletic traits. Um, you know, this uh, this football team that we play, no doubt, will require our very best. Um, just to kind of go through what we see on film and and what we know a little bit about them last year, and and I would say a little bit. Uh, about them because we have a different football team and 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 they're a different football team as well so there's not a lot of going back on last year it's really about both these teams this year and and offensively a new quarterback Rogier's a gritty kid I mean um, you know as a first year starter um, he, he finds ways to make plays he's a lot of like uh, Brandon um, when you look at him he just you know, finds ways to win football games. Um, whether he's going to run for a first down or make a key play, he keeps the drives alive. Um, Braxton Berrios is the engine to that offense, uh, no doubt about it, but he's also extremely productive. So um, it's one thing to be, you know, the emotional leader, but, you know, he averages, I think, close to 15 yards, you know, per catch. And, I think he's, you know, somebody that you have to game plan for in the special teams game as a punt returner. Um, you know, Homer's done an incredible job coming in for the loss of Walton, who we all know is, is one of the best running backs in the country. But Homer um, leads the team in rushing. Um, I think he's got six touchdowns, very shifty, athletic player that can go the distance and has really done a great job for him. And, and a veteran offensive line that, that really – you know, I don't know that you point to one guy other than they really, they work well together. It's a group uh, collectively that, um, you know, you can see that they, they communicate well with each other. It's, it's a real solid unit across the board. And I think Herndon may be the best tight end that we see all year. I mean, in terms of his skill set, um, he's a matchup problem for us that we have to identify. Um, so all in all, you know, an offense that creates, you know, a lot of problems from the quarterback down to the receivers, uh, veteran offensive line, tight end, and, and the running back is um, certainly one that has stepped in there to do a, to do a great job. Defensively, um, they lead the nation now in, in tackles for loss. Um, and, and I think you start with Jackson and Thomas on the edge. Um, both of them extremely athletic, can rush uh, the quarterback, but also can play the run. Um, can also track down uh, a number of things that, that go on offensively. And when I mean track them down, they can make up for a lot of things that are going on defensively um, in, in terms of getting to the quarterback, chasing down a quarterback, chasing down plays from the backside. Uh, extremely athletic. McIntosh and Norton inside. Um, disruptive tackles for a loss. So it's, a, it's an outstanding front four. Um, the linebackers run and tackle as well as any group that we've played. Um, uh, Quarterman, Pinckney, and, and McLeod, and they don't come off the field. They're guys that stay on the field on first, second, and third down. We don't see that very often. We see a team that shows themselves in terms of personnel quite a bit, uh, in terms of taking the linebacker off the field and getting it to nickel. They can play a very uh, a number of different coverages by keeping um, three linebackers on the field, and that's a that's pretty hard to do today in, in college football. So unique skill set uh, on that group, and then in the back end, um, you know, obviously Jackson, excuse me, Johnson at, at the safety position is their leading tackler, um, outstanding safety. Um, I think Redwine, you know, he brings a nice skill set because he's a former corner who can play the number two receiver. Uh, and then depth at the, at the cornerback position, Jackson Young. You know, Delaney's probably healthy to play now, so they've got great depth there. So um, really good football team uh, across the board, offense, defense, special teams. Um, but it's not just about talent. It's well coached. Um, you know, you can see that. You know, it's it's – it's a lot easier to kind of um, put together a bunch of talented players, but to coach them, get them in the right position, line them up, uh, getting, play, getting this group to play together uh, with, with a, a great amount of, uh, of energy, 
Um, Mark's done a great job. So really good football team. Exciting. Um, I know got, our guys are excited about this championship drive that they're on now. Um, this part of the season, obviously, in November is you know, all the teams that are in contention are uh, focused on one game at a time. And, um, you know, it's single elimination for most teams. So with that, I'll open it up uh, to any questions. Brian, uh, just I know you updated us on Wimbush and Adams on Sunday. Wonder if there's any change in either of them, or you still feel very optimistic? No, they're good. They're, they uh, had a great day in the weight room yesterday, uh, physically. Um, so uh, th there are no concerns about uh, their readiness and, and what their physical um, stature is for for going into the game. You. you your team has gone from 80th in rushing offense to fifth in one year, and I know that there's a lot of things that go into that, but from the offensive line standpoint, what they did in the offseason, buying into maybe the mentality, what was kind of the dynamic like behind the scenes in terms of their improvement from last year to this year to be ready to be this kind of offensive line? Well, the pieces were there certainly, um, you know, it was a change of philosophy in terms of what we were going to uh, really, um, you know, hang our hat on, if you will, in terms of who we were going to be, our identity. So our identity was going to run through that offensive line. So, you know, when you, when you talk about it, it's one thing, but when you actually do it, I think it started to show itself, you know, Certainly, we didn't run the ball as effectively as we wanted to against Georgia. But I think, I think when we broke through with over 500 yards rushing against Boston College, I think that that was really where everything started to kind of, you know, show itself that this is who we were going to be. And, and then it's, you know, sh certainly taken shape from there. So in the offseason, there was a commitment to it. The hiring, uh, the philosophy, the, uh, the, the total makeover of our entire um, uh, mental psyche in terms of being physical was all part of that. But I don't think it really takes hold until in the season when that's all backed up by actually doing it. And you can talk about all that stuff, but if you actually do it and, and stick to it, I think that that's when it starts to really come together. When the Georgia game, after the Georgia game, there were a lot of people certainly on the outside kind of pointing at the offensive line and saying, why didn't they, why aren't they better? What was that week like between the end of Georgia and the 515 yards? What were those guys like in terms of their demeanor? They were fine because it, it wasn't all on the offensive line. It was, you know, a number of things that we needed to do better collectively. Um, at the uh, a number of different positions from tight end to quarterback to running back to coaches you know everybody and it was still becoming more comfortable with what we were doing schematically as well so um no there wasn't a panic there wasn't you know finger pointing it was let's continue to do what we're doing we'll break through and with with dalen hayes he, he when he things weren't coming for him he seemed like a real patient guy very mature and so forth now that the game's kind of coming to him. He's, he's a starter, productive starter. Uh, where do you feel like the next steps are for him in terms of, because I'm sure there's more out there for him. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I think playing, playing the game with um, a consistency for him week in and week out is, is everybody's uh, probably next step. How do you get to that level of consistency? You know, his focus is, is great. I think, um, you know, how does he get to peak performance each and every week? And I think a lot of it becomes now the mental piece for him and, and growing there. And I think um, the great part about it is, is he knows those things and he's working on them each and every week. Brian, is, is there any, there's a bunch of co uh, coaches that are turning around the second year, Rick, Scott Frost, there are some others. Is there any connection between what has happened here going four and eight to now and them in their first two years turning things around? I really don't know the specifics of those other programs, to be quite honest with you. I think, I think what's... What is, what is pertinent relative to Notre Dame, and this is my opinion, and you can choose to believe it or not, is that 
our foundation was in place. What we needed to do is um, make some changes that allowed us to grow again. And, and, and so in other situations, there's a full kind of uh, new staff, new blood, uh, new energy, if you will, and, and it changes uh, kind of like the wind coming through the door. Um, th th this one was different. I've had three other jobs where I came in and, and it was a whole change of, um, you know, the, the, the entire look was different and it, and it creates an energy that's different. Um, this this one was was much more about the um, the approach on a day to day basis changing um, and the plan changing from what it was before and and so that's that's just this business plan was different. I can't comment on the others because I'm really not sure what they look like. Sure. Hey Brian, um, after looking at film, uh, after looking at the defense. What needs to change moving ahead uh, for Miami after this weekend's performance? Oh, uh, preparation needs to be better. Uh, we didn't prepare quite the way we had prepared in other weeks, so we just need to <clears throat> go back to our process. And um, our process has to be the thing that drives our defense and our offense each and every week. So. Um, if, if you had, uh, if, if you were in our meeting yesterday, you would have seen that, that um, Wednesday wasn't the same Wednesday practice as it was uh, the previous weeks. And uh, it showed itself in the way we played against Wake Forest. Uh, there's no, um, they, didn't, they didn't find the key to unlock the secrets of the Elko defense. Um, there's, there's no, there's, there's nothing like that. This is really about, um, playing with the, the right intensity and the right uh, mental approach to the game. We just, we didn't prepare in the manner that we had prepared in the other weeks, uh, and we'll do that, and we'll need to do that moving forward. Is there any reason why? It seems like every week you guys have been the same, but this week wasn't. Well, I can point to uh, a number of factors, and most of them have to do with um, maturity and, and um, making sure that uh, the distractions um, don't creep in. Um, many coaches are in press conferences talking about how those distractions cost them a loss. Um, it didn't cost us a loss. Um, we were fortunate that we were up 31-10 at the half and hadn't played very well defensively played one really good series in the third quarter and then didn't play up to our level defensively again um, and then got up 41-16 and started looking at the scoreboard. Um, so a lot of it was not sticking to our process, not paying attention to detail, really not staying locked in and staying focused on um, and a lot of that had to do with being distracted by other things. Um, if we're distracted, um, that's the kind of defense we'll play, and it's not good enough. Brian, you mentioned uh, up top, you mentioned that uh, they're now, for the second week in a row, you're facing the number one tackles for a loss team. A lot of Miami's comes from sacks, quarterback pressure, and with their ability to kind of turn, turn you over in the secondary, what's your chief challenge there combating that, especially on third down? Well, I mean, it, it, look, it, it doesn't change, right? I mean, leveraging third down for us has been key all year, staying out of, you know, the long third down situation. So we can, look, we've done this all year. We're, we're taking third down and trying to cut it in a half because uh, I like fourth down too. Um, so really trying to keep out of those third and, you know, double digits. Uh, if, if we can keep them into third manageable, um, the quarterback can run too. Um, so don't force it, don't turn the football over, make it manageable on third down situations and worry about the quarterback whether he throws it or he runs it. Uh, that's really the key for us. You start getting up into those 12, 13, 14, 15, you're in trouble. Um, and, and that's what we've done really well all year is we've leveraged third down in our favor. I just wanted to follow up a little bit on Eric's question with the running game. Do you see this as a long-range philosophical change, 
or is it more temporary for this year predicated on the strengths that you have with the offensive line receiving core and an inexperienced quarterback because next year Brandon will be experienced, the receiving core will be more experienced, and maybe the line will be less so. I think we're always going to get outstanding linemen here at Notre Dame. Um, I think the trend in college football is going to be that, um, you know, I think RPOs are got a chance of going away. Um, you know, I think that there's there's less desire to to want to see linemen downfield, um, and and that rule is is. Um, is, is, is getting some pushback in terms of uh, how it's being uh, even officiated now. So I think it's going to come back to putting a premium on offensive line play. Um, and uh, we've have a, a great history of getting great offensive linemen here. So I don't know if that answers the question, but um, we should be really good at running the football here at Notre Dame. But always willing to adjust too at the same time based on your strengths. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I don't think you, you want to get painted into a corner, but I, I think you have to be able to, especially um, as we get into uh, the month of November, um, looking at how we're going to schedule. Um, you know, I'd like to see Florida State up here in November playing against Notre Dame um, in those kinds of you know where you got to be physical. I think those. You know, the teams that want to come up from the south up here, I, I think our demeanor and, and physicality should be part of who we are. Um, so maybe that's a departure from where I was before, but, you know, I, I'm learning every, every year and trying to get smarter. And staying on the topic of November uh, and how you've mentioned that this team is specifically built for November, Looking at the field Sunday night at Miami at the Dolphins game seemed pretty uh, poor shape. Uh, I think they've had to replace it four times. You had a game like that at Stanford, I think, in 2011. Also, Andrew Luck's last year. Mm -hmm. Is there any different motive uh, going into that game? Longer cleats, or do you stay with that physicality aspect too? Well, we're not going to change who we are. We'll, we might change our shoes. Um, and 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 certainly today we'll we'll wear screw ins instead of the molded and and try those out. We haven't used the screw in shoe. Um, you know it limits what you can do because you can't go from f field turf and use the screw in on field turf and then go on the grass. So one unit's got to stay on the grass the whole time. So it, it, it changes how you practice. But I think I think we're going to put probably one of the units in, in screw in today. Uh, and one of the units, offense or defense, I haven't decided, and, and mold it and maybe switch it just so they get uh, the screw-in shoe on them for the first time. And then have that option to use a screw-in uh, instead of a molded um, on Saturday. And so we have options uh, for the field conditions, and that's all we... I, I just want to produce options for our guys, uh, and if we don't do it, here on Tuesday and Wednesday, then we don't have that. I don't want to throw a, a screw and uh, cleat on a kid that's never used it before because it is a different shoe. Either way, you feel that the way you've built this team this year is advantageous to the conditions you might face there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really that concerned. I mean, there are some slipping, but it's going to be for both teams. I mean, I, I mean, there's really not much you can do. Everybody's playing in the same kind of conditions. Um, we've seen it on film, but. Um, they're, they're, they're not unplayable conditions to that point, and, and it's not something that we're going to get distracted by. Thank you. Brian up here. Yeah. You guys have played extremely well on the road this year, but it's been about a month since you've been on the road. Does that change any, anything in terms of just reminding guys again of how to prepare because it's just been a while since you've been on the road? Yeah, we'll go through our routine that we had um, when we started uh, our, our three-game road swing um, you know just uh, you know the crowd noise and you know silent cadence and um, you know preparing for road uh, distractions and things of that nature but th there it, it won't take much for them to acclimatize and then um, getting ready for night games you know they they've had that so um, yeah we, we do we do have a checklist that we'll go through but it it, it won't take them much to to get back on on that train 
Obviously, being in a, a top 10 matchup this late in the year is always going to be exciting. Does the fact that it's Miami add to it based on the history uh, of this rivalry for you? I don't think so. I, I, they know... They know Miami, they know the, the history and tradition, they're aware of all those things, but they know that they have to play really well, and they have to play better than they did last week. I think that that's what they know more than anything else. Um, I don't think that they spend a whole lot of time thinking about the history and tradition, although there are some great matchups, and I don't want to um, uh, sell those short, but the, the real focus of this group is that they know they're playing a really, really good football team, and, and they have to play well. And do you think, uh, what, what do you think it says about college football that, you know, a year ago, obviously, it was, you guys were four and eight, they were eight and four, and, and a year later, both teams are right in the heart of it, of how quickly uh, things can change and, and teams can, can uh, become, you know, some of the best teams in the country. <laughs> Well, there's a, there's, there's a number of ways I could answer that question. Um, fans could be more patient. Um, I'm sure that's not the answer you wanted. Um, I would just say that, um, you know, college football, 85 scholarships, um, you know, the ability for, for uh, teams to invest in, in player development, um, it's, it's really important to, to so many institutions um, that, uh, you know, everybody's got a fair shot at, at, at being competitive year in and year out. Yeah. Now, Coach, you know, you were just mentioning your defense's intensity playing full uh, 60 minutes. I'm just curious about when you look at them on film, what do you see on that defense as far as its intensity playing throughout the game itself? Well, they, they really love to play, and, and that's pretty clear, and their, um, their effort is outstanding. They obviously, the, the, the group is, is, uh, is, Manny Diaz does a great job with the group in terms of its, um, uh, I, I would just say, um, demeanor, right? They, they, they run on the ball. Um, they're athletic, but uh, it's a group that, you know, is excited to, to be playing. Um, so you can see that energy. There's, there's great energy. There, I, said, I think I, my comments in the outset were th this is an athletic and talented team, but that's not enough. <laughs> you can be athletic and talented, but that's not enough. It's well coached. I mean, you, you, you could take a collection of 11 really good athletes, um, but if they're not well coached, you know, they're just running around, and they don't just run around. There's, it's very purposeful, um, and uh, they've created, obviously, some energy with their takeaway uh, chain. Uh, I think that's what it's called. I hope I haven't messed that up. I haven't been paying real close attention to it, but I think that they've used that as, as collectively as a way to, 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 you know, to galvanize the group. But it's, it's a really well-coached athletic group. And uh, just uh, real quickly, you were just kind of saying a second ago, I know your focus is on playing better than you did last week, but how much do you kind of toe that line of, hey, we do have this tradition with this team, we do have this tradition with where we're trying to bring the program back to here at Notre Dame? How much do you kind of toe that line of, of what this series has meant, what this rivalry has meant, and, uh, and then, of course, just playing better than you did last week? Uh, you know, we just talked about we didn't live up to the standard that, that we have, and, and there's a standard that we, we need to play at, and, um, you know, we're going to play to that standard, and we'll have to play to that standard against Miami. Um, and so for us, it's, it's been about our total preparation, and, and it's been about our process, and w we went back to that yesterday in, in our weight training and our film study. Um, the rest of it is, is for you guys to talk about, and, and we're very respectful of that, and we're aware of that, and we love being in the position we're in. It doesn't help us in our preparation, though, for Miami, so it really doesn't do us any good spending time talking about it. Uh, Brian here, just an injury rundown. Dexter, Alize, and uh, Cam Smith. Okay, Dexter. Um, his explosion was back yesterday in, in, our, um, in, in our high clean pull, so I, I, 
I'd say he's getting closer and closer. You saw that he, he didn't have that full speed um, on Saturday, but I think we're, we're getting closer there. We're, we're optimistic for a good week. Uh, Alizé will practice today. Um, and uh, Cam um, is going to go today. Uh, we took another picture uh, of that hamstring. Didn't quite like what we saw, but we're going to let him stretch it out today and, and see how it goes. Uh, we saw a little bit of, uh, um, you know, some, some cloudiness in that hamstring. Um, we'll see how it goes today, um, and hopefully he's, he's able to, um, uh, to go at full go today. As you sort of sat down and watched film of Brandon on Saturday, what would you like? Did you feel like that was his best game? Yeah, it was his best game. It, it's still about uh, the fundamentals with him, mechanically, uh, drop, consistently with his drop, consistently with um, the pocket, pocket awareness, um, uh, vision, you know, uh, the field, seeing the field. So uh, this is still work in progress, much better, um, you know, I think that um, we're at that point now where he's starting to feel uh, the drops, where, where it's becoming much more um, of, we're closer to unconscious competence, where it's been conscious competence. He has to think about his drops all the time. We're getting closer to that level, and hopefully we have a great week and we can carry that over to Saturday. You had mentioned sort of about practice last week and using the term distraction. I, I think the assumption would be, well, what was different to distract you would be the college football playoff. Did mm. you get a sense of, of no. any of that? Or, or no. what do you think the distraction may have been? Well, I, I mean, each player is different. Drew had three engineering projects. And he was up until, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Those are distractions. They're, they're needed. I mean, he had to take care of those. But, you know, he had three hours sleep, you know, on Thursday and Friday. It's welcome to the life of a college student at Notre Dame. Um, now, maybe, maybe we had some other guys that had distractions that could have been handled better. Um, but it, the enemy is distractions. You know, the enemy isn't the college football playoffs. They, they know that, that they have to, there's internal distractions and there's external distractions. The external distractions, we've got those covered pretty good for our guys. It's the internal distractions where they start thinking about, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, Maybe I don't have to play quite as hard this week. Maybe, maybe I don't have to get all the nutrition and sleep I need this week. You know, maybe, maybe I don't have to play quite as hard this week. And, and it's the internal distractions. And so that's where we, we spend most of our time. Is it too silver lining-ish to say that some of the things that happened last week are positives for the next three games? I don't. No, we use them as, as great learning and teaching opportunities for our guys. And, all right, this is major big picture. This, oh. is, this is your 100th game here. More, more big picture stuff. I get headaches with this stuff. <laughs> I'm curious as you reflect on 100. I, I got asked whether we were forever going to run the ball here. <laughs> I mean. Yes, for the next 100 games. I think games. it was for the next 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> does, does that number feel like an abstraction to you? Uh, that's what, what did you ask? A hundred games uh, here. I've been here a hundred games. This is your one hundredth game. That's like a thousand dog years, isn't yeah, it? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious how, you know, in some ways, as you look at how this place maybe has changed you as much as you know when you come in, you try to change it. Uh, Dennis asks about you know you come in, you try to rebuild something and change some things. It's focus, refocus. It's really focus, refocus at Notre Dame. You have to stay on top of it. I mean, it's, um, I mean, I'm honored to have uh, of gotten the opportunity to coach 100 games. Um, I, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd ever get a chance to coach one game at Notre Dame. So to think of 100, I can't even, you know, wrap my, my arms around that. Um, so, I, look, I try not to think in those, those terms, but I'm honored. Um, I would have liked to have won even more games for our fans uh, and for our players. 
Um, but um, my focus is on, on beating Miami, and um, that's, that's what we're hoping for, uh, for, for 100. Uh, first row, um, you mentioned Miami's turnover chain that they have, and there are those kind of props popping up all over college football. I'm wondering what's your stance on all that kind of the gimmicky and the prop stuff that, that's been popping up. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, everybody has uh, something within their program that is, is set to elicit you know, something f for their players to lock into something, right? Everybody's trying to, kind of like I said before, right? You know, what gets your guys locked into something, right? Um, you know, the turnover chain is, is something of, of a prop, but, you know, it gets them really focused on, hey, you know, um, as a team, we win, right? As a team, but here's your little individual peace you know we live in that society today so uh, you know whatever works for for you to get that and get the most out of your players um, I could see how it would happen but um, I, I guess you know I think I think each each program is trying to come up with those kinds of things to to help them maximize the success and then Brandon hasn't thrown an interception since Boston College I think I'm wondering what is it I don't want to jinx anybody here. <laughs> That's one of those things. What, what do you think it is about a young quarterback that has allowed him to protect the football, knock on wood, I suppose, the way that he has? It's one of our core tenets. Um, we, <laughs> we coach it every day. Uh, we try not to talk about it like that. Um, we talk about, um, you know, having great ball security, making good decisions, and, and um, you know, it's, it's really... Uh, it's, it's how we'll be successful is, is if we take care of the football. Thanks, everybody. All right. What a delightful